Hi and welcome to this small tutorial on facial expressions. So what I did here was create this side view of a dog almost as a 2D drawing so we can really focus on the principles of squash and stretch and changing shapes in order to create the expression. So you can imagine if one part of the face stretches another part compresses or like chewing gum if you pull a piece of chewing gum really far you can make it really really long but in the middle it will get really thin but the overall volume of that chewing gum will stay the same and you can think of squash and stretch in a very similar way if we squash a certain part of the head we need to make it thinner or we need to compress another part so the volume stay consistent so in order to to keep this uh, understandable I I use this two-dimensional design so we can really look at the shapes as they are right now and how they change if we change the expressions of this dog. So let's get started and see what happens if we create these expressions in this design. So when I think of surprise I would think you know the eyebrows would go up um, maybe the mouth would open so we would have a stretch on this part of the face maybe the ears go up as well it's it's an alert uh, look on his face so uh, looking at this this initial shape I might I might stretch that just a little bit and if I stretch it that also means I need to make it a, a little thinner um, so you know eyebrow goes up we can think of you can look here to that shape and see how that would how that would change want to feel that stretch within the entire shape then we have the, the mouth nose goes up so maybe that pushes a, a, instead of having that curve it might even push up a little bit and changing that curve so that we feel that stretch on this side as well um, we might see that corner of the mouth go in as the mouth opens so from here we we have this angle right here but as this stretches that angle gets weaker so we we would have something like this happening there i think now the mouth opens so i'm uh, i'm going in to that shape uh, then opening it back up actually this might be a little rounder and so this line goes around it's below that opening so and what I want to do is to to make sure that there's a rhythm in these angles making sure that there is a, a clear uh, difference between those lines And then let's see so we have this shape probably would go back in a little bit as it stretches open actually this is a pretty big shape and so as he is surprised I want to stretch that neck maybe even more change the curve here so it moves towards that stretch i think this eyebrow would be the really the moment the the point where everything stretches towards let me change this i don't feel this is really working well so I wanted that to have a nice flowing curve
so the eye stretches it opens up uh, but it uh, you know so we lose that eyelid I think those uh, those locks of hair they probably will go up as well so again stretch on this side lesser curve on the opposite side Maybe we see a teeth coming out there. I don't know. That's not in the the original design, so let's not make a thing of that. And the ear would probably go up. Maybe there is some some kind of movement happening there. So try to think, you know, what's the point every time you you draw a curve? You know, what's the the point of that shape that leads the action and what is following the action? So here, you know, this is where the action is led to. So those are the, you know, what I direct those curves towards. Changing the, the angle there, stretch, stretch, and so I think it's still very clear to see how I changed those simple shapes into, uh, you know, into more pushed shapes not even that much but there is definitely a, a change of uh, of of shapes based on squash and stretch rhythm stretch stretch all the way into there here we would have the pinch you know so we could have that curve even go in more like that if we want so that we maintain that volume of the head let's move this over and work on the next one so sadness so we would have the opposite happening there same shape uh, but in this case my shape is is stretched and the nose drops down actually so and an eyebrow goes down I think the ear will go down so everything that whole thing feels like there's more weight to it that nose can can be pushed down I'm not sure if I'm drawing in the right scale here um, might be a little bigger than the original but um, I can imagine those locks of hair go down also so for the basic shape this is what that could look like stretched shape you can clearly see how that shape changed based on the original this is a this is a long stretch compared to this you know we could even think of a a fold right here I think it changes the design a little too much but you can imagine that at some point we would get some kind of pinch right there if we get it 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 appears there here we see the exact opposite happening want to find a curve that 
emphasizes that stretch nose drops down we have so we have the stretch even at the top of the nose so this line now almost continues where here we have this line continue where the stretch is and we have some kind of pinch here here the opposite happens I might have drawn it a little too big but that's that's what I would see happening and then here again curve maybe we see even less of, it, of that lower lip really really a lot of sadness and and sense of weight you know hanging from from that uh, from that face lock of hair hangs down you know as if there is more weight to it than in the original design and then the ear Let's attach it. You know, it's, it attaches at the same point, but as it goes out, it almost immediately drops down. This is the length. You know, it comes up to about the side of the eye. So we might stretch it a little bit longer to emphasize that weight. And again, try to find a curve that emphasizes that that stretch and that feeling of weight in your design um, so that's what that could look like I can see that I have added a little more weight here I think maybe in this first design I should uh, you know add a little more volume to this part to keep the design a little more consistent But as always, that's something, you know, you keep looking at your design, you keep changing things. Again, with this, uh, with these exercises, it's mostly about, uh, you know, doing exercises to understand the principles. So don't worry if you don't get any everything right uh, in one go. Uh, you know, there's always time to uh, to adjust, but most important is to to have an understanding of the principles. So let's move on to the next one. So as I mentioned before, there are many ways you can express uh, ha happiness, anger. Um, I, in this case, I would probably think of him, um, you know, he's a dog, so he will probably use his uh, his mouth to, to attack or something or to, to yell. So I, I would say this, you know, the mouth opens, this part goes forward. Let me just erase this so this is the part that goes forward and this would drag behind that's basically how I would look at it so if I would draw that shape um, could be something like this so it's, it's the same shape but now I want to change it uh, according to uh, this direction happening in the design and then as I think of that mouth being opened you know maybe we do have some kind of pinch here if it's uh, let's see so stretch of that open mouth neck stretches um, here we would have the eye and probably also a, a big frown appearing and you know I think these shapes can be really helpful to to find the right placement of of the different elements you know because you can so clearly see how those shapes change according you know as a result of of the force that's that's being applied Maybe that's a little too high. And so, you know, if you don't know where to start, the, you know, it's often good just to to put lines down and from there on just see if they work. You, you know, you can't have everything right uh, at once. Um, and if it's not right, you know, just change it. There's, there's no... Uh, 
harm in that as I'm doing right now, you know, thinking that this I could be, uh, I think it needs to be pushed back a little bit. It's not so far, uh, it, it, there's a, not as big of a distance there, uh, but at the same time, shouldn't be so high as as high as I drew it at the beginning. So that nose may now as well be go back just like here, but even more maybe. Having complete curve there. And you know these are all decisions. If you want the, the nose to to push forward in this action, that's you know that's just as valid, a valid of a thing to do. I can imagine the the lip pushing up the skin right there, just as here the skin is pushed up because of that uh, that nose going up like that. So thinking of how that mouth would open, I'm tr continuing that line. And also the the neck is really stretching forward here. Um, nope, maybe the the hair comes forward, you know. And these are things that are debatable. You can have the hair go back because of the movement like this. Then it really feels like he's moving forward. At the same time, you can think of the hair coming forward as you know, to, to emphasize the feeling that he is attacking, going in, moving forward. So, uh, you know, having these principles of what happens if he moves forward is, is just there to, to help you, uh, you know, to, to give you options of how you can design it. But there, there are definitely not rules. Uh, what's most important in the decision making, I think, is you know what's your story? What do you want to say with this design? And does that choice you are making uh, help to tell that story as as clear as as possible? Uh, that I think that for me is the the thing I like to keep in mind as I am designing. So, for example, here I can show that that movement in the ear, but you can also see there is some relaxation in there. He is moving forward, but at the same time, it's not, uh, a, you know, as strong as uh, f it's not full force. It's not completely stretched in that direction. So again, the amount of effect you show of an object being changed by the force that's applied on it uh, helps you t say something about how strong that force is or how uh, uh, strong that that movement is that you that you show in the design so if you're interested in more tutorials like this check out my course expressive characters on schoolism.com uh, there's another course called conceptual characters and and there's also a digital painting workout course that's available. Uh, those are my courses and clearly there are many other courses that you can subscribe to and actually right now there's a winter sale going on where you get an enormous discount so check it out at schoolism.com